Hey there, everyone. I don't know if you saw this today, but one of the videos that I watched uh, today at the gym was from Meets Kevin. And he put out his 10 rules to financial freedom. So, you know, when I saw that video, I had to hit play. Uh, I like what he does. He's so professional. He really appears to just enjoy what he's doing, which is, uh, which is pretty awesome to see. Uh, however, as I was listening to it, uh, I found myself repeatedly going, okay, he's 27. Uh, he started investing in the current bull market. Michael, you're 47 and have been through multiple ups and downs. And uh, it's probably not shocking that while you both agree on so much that you will look at the situation and if you were going to create your 10 rules, a few would be the same, sure, uh, but many of them would be different. So as usual, this thing gets stuck in my head and uh, I've, just got to, I've just got to share it with you. So here is my list, my 10 rules to financial freedom. And I went ahead and created a PowerPoint so you uh, can follow along. So first and foremost, I'm, as I'll say in a minute, again, I am clearly uh, inspired by what I saw from Meet Kevin today. Uh, I'm recording this less than three hours after I saw it. Uh, it took me a while to kind of digest and figure out what 10 things I wanted to talk about. Uh, but first and foremost, if you really want to hear about our story, uh, it uh, was the first thing I did after achieving financial freedom in uh, by achieving financial independence or financial freedom, it means I left the rat race. I left the corporate world behind me. And, uh, you know, I am, uh, I am not a real estate broker. I am not uh, a high paid YouTuber. Uh, I live off of and my rental income, right? Positive cash flow uh, from my rental portfolio. And if you want to read about it, you can find it here on Amazon. Thousands of books sold uh, in the first 12 months, uh, over 100 reviews. Uh, do me a favor. If this book has meant something to you, and a lot of people watch my channel have read my book, do me a huge favor, please. Go to Amazon and leave a five-star review, even if it just says, great book. Uh, I'm a self-published author. Each of those means something. Uh, we got to 100 reviews in the first year, which was awesome. Uh, I'm hoping maybe we can get uh, to two or 300 reviews this year as book sales are taking off now. Uh, the first year uh, was four or five a day and lately we're up to, to 10 a day, it seems like. So again, if you're watching this and you have read the book, take, take five minutes, go to Amazon and leave a five-star review. Again, great book would be, would be wonderful. Uh, I thank you so much for doing that. So going on, uh, again, um, 100%, this, this video is 100% inspired by Meet Kevin. Uh, it was his topic. I watched his video twice. Um, again, some of it I agreed with it. A lot of it I'm like, not sure I would have said that. Uh, so I figured I'd have to create my own. Again, we're 20 years apart. And, um, you know, I've lived through a couple of bear markets, a couple of crashes, and come out the other side. So again, my scars, my, my wounds are, are very different. So, you know, not, not saying right or wrong. It's just a different perspective. Uh, the one thing that really kind of irritates me every time I hear Meet Kevin say it is he talks about buying a house for 400 and then, you know, it goes up 3% or whatever it is. And he says he makes 75K. That bothers me, I'll be honest with you, because you're not making 75K, right? Your property appreciated 75K. Sure, your net worth might be up 75K, but you didn't make it, right? I've seen markets collapse, and that could go away overnight. Plus, when you say you make it, are you sure you made it? Because an appraiser is going to come out and do a refi, and will it appraise? And Yes, I know you can borrow some of that. It just, that phrase of make 75K because of appreciation, I think is what gets a lot of people in trouble with California real estate. Too many California real estate investors buy negative cash flow because they make it up with appreciation. 
I think that is a horrible strategy. It does work out. And some people have become multimillionaires because they sold at the right time. But you don't make it. it it's just, you don't make it. It's that you come with a different word. That's, that's the wrong word. Uh, the other one that's very different between Kevin and I, uh, he has been an entrepreneur since day one. Uh, much kudos to him. I wish I would have done my life differently. Uh, he is the man there. I worked a corporate job. I worked a 40 hour a week job, started as an accountant, became a, a consultant, became a pre-sales engineer, sales guy, sales manager, second line. Uh, so I worked the corporate ladder, uh, which is very different than being an entrepreneur and, and making it on your own. Uh, and again, I applaud Kevin for that. But a lot of people that watch me are on the corporate ladder and they're like, man, I got to get off this darn thing. How can I do it? And, you know, quitting to create a YouTube channel or uh, flip houses or whatever is just not practical when you have a family. So again, our one rental at a time story is interesting because I worked a full-time job, raised a daughter, put her through college, um, you know, all, all because of it. So I, it's, it's different. Um, and the last thing is I never had a side hustle like uh, Kevin has. He makes, and he shares with us hundreds of thousands of dollars a month from YouTube. And uh, you know, that can make up for a lot of ills if you have negative cash flow or something, right? Because these content, these videos he's putting out, he never creates another one. He probably makes half a million dollars a year just from his past content. So again, shout out, much respect, kudos, uh, everything for you. So again, this video is 100% inspired. Just realize that, hey, I've got 20 years and some scars on me. So my top 10 is going to be different. So here we go. My first rule is if you were in corporate America, is you owe it to yourself and your family to do what you can to make sure your day job is secure. Yes, I know this isn't fancy and uh, I know it goes against the grain and, and all of that stuff. But again, as somebody who was climbing the corporate ladder, trying to build a real estate portfolio on the side, I needed to make sure I wasn't going to get laid off or fired because it would slow down my growth. Uh, so again, uh, I think this year is going to be an awesome year. If you want to change jobs, this is the year to do it. Uh, but I think at some point in the future, some, somewhere on your 10-year journey to financial freedom, um, the job market will change and you'll have to be more conservative. Make sure you're not on, on the bleeding edge and, and all of those things. So again, my rule of my top 10, you know, starts with making sure your day job is there so you can keep paying the bills and not stress about how you're going to feed your family and keep a roof over your head. Number two, again, about the day job, I, I found this for me, it was, it was um, highly advantageous is I took a lower base salary, but I was able to take commissions. And in commission world, if you exceed quota, you can make a decent amount of money. Uh, plus, I was given bonuses and stock and things of that nature because I was good at what I did. So all of that extra, we'll call it bonuses for today's conversation, save that. Live below your means, as you'll see in a minute, but you've got to save all the extras. Uh, too many people I saw and worked with took the extras and had amazing vacations and have the fancy, fancy cars. Uh, I chose not to have that lifestyle. Bust your butt during the day, take all the extras and save, save, save. Here's another one for you again. Uh, reduce your expenses. Uh, I would challenge you to look at your expenses and try to lower them 10% this year. Uh, I break it down most often to needs and wants. Uh, we, if we were honest with ourselves, we don't need that much. We just want a lot of stuff. Um, you know, and ultimately see if you can, while you're on this journey, lower your expenses by 50%. If you can't get there, fine. But get as low as you can. Again, understand needs versus wants. It's a 10-year journey. Um, so again, it's not about how much you make. It's about how much you keep and how much you invest. The other one, buy and hold rental properties are great, um, but you must do the work. You must learn your market. You don't gamble. You don't just look at the market one day and pick the blue house. I want you to be able to tell anybody you're talking to what a bad, average, good, and great deal is. If you need help with that, there's a link below this video to a course I have giving you a full outline of what's there. Check it out. Pick, pick your market, pick your asset type, and get to work. 
it doesn't take a lot of time, 10, 15 minutes a day. Uh, we have student interviews on this channel. I think there's a playlist. Go check it out. But until you can tell me or your significant other what a bad, average, good, or great deal is in your, in your chosen market, don't be in a rush to, to buy something. Oh, man, sacrifice. When did sacrifice become a dirty word? Uh, you're going to be ready to sacrifice and live below your, main, below your means uh, when your friends are not doing that. Uh, I've been very clear about an emotional day for me at about year eight uh, where we had to pull over and I just lost it when we came back from a housewarming party. Uh, you know, a friend in the organization moved again and, and upgraded his house. Well, we hadn't done that. And um, I just didn't know if we were doing the right things. And uh, yeah, that day still sticks with me. So again, if you're going to be on this journey, get committed and buckle up because it's going to be 10 years. And I want to use the word sacrifice because you're going to sacrifice today for a much better future tomorrow. You know, this is a quick one. I, I want you to plan for 10 years, 10 years, a decade, right? Could you get done sooner? Absolutely. Uh, but I want you to think 10 years. And if you happen to exit sooner than that, congratulations, enjoy. But I'm not here to tell you this is a two-year thing. If you're going to bust your butt during the day and do all these things, um, just know you're committed to a 10-year journey. This is one that really bugs me because I've seen too many people do it, right? You sacrifice four, five, six years. You just start to see the momentum building. You got some real cash flow coming in. You're like, ooh, that's different. That feels good. And you rush out and buy a new car or take a fancy vacation. You just kill the momentum. What are you doing? You're almost there. Don't stop. Keep going. So don't, uh, don't let a splashy purchase at year six or seven just stop you and you have to start again. Man, that's, when I see that happen to people, it's, it's horrible because I know, I know what those first six years felt like. And I know it's testing you with a little taste of success. And then, boom, you got to start over. Oh, it's so bad. Market cycles are real. And this is something I really think Mr. Meet Kevin just hasn't experienced yet. He's had the best 12 year journey of California real estate at his back. Everything he touches turns to gold. It's freaking awesome. Wedge deals are everywhere. Well, that's not always going to be the case. I think it's years away because I think single family homes are going to be awesome investments for years to come. But there will be a time where uh, single family homes will go the other direction. And frankly, Southern California and the Bay Area, it may, may be sooner rather than later. But, you know, when somebody wants to overpay you, sell. And if you know, don't know what I mean, get this book because we, uh, we survived the crash because we did just that. People wanted to overpay for houses and it hurt right? Because we'd spent so long getting those eight houses, uh, but they were just paying more than we thought they were worth. So we sold them and uh, we're so happy we did. Never, 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 never stop looking at your market. If you pick a market in an asset type, I want you to look every day, even if it's 10 or 15 minutes. And you know what? If you have no money, look twice as much. Just keep going, keep grinding, keep putting in the work. And again, if you don't know what to look for, just take it the outline in my course below. Uh, it'll take you to the website. Listen to other students talk about what they're doing. It's amazing what focus and consistency will bring to the equation and help you with financial freedom. Again, if you don't have money, keep looking anyways. And number 10, I got to close with my favorite. It's focus and consistency and time. Again, it's focus, consistency, and time that will get you to financial freedom. If you're going to do buy and hold real estate, it's that combination of focus, don't get distracted, consistent effort of looking and understanding your market, and then time. Time has to tick by, appreciation, mortgage pay down, rental increases, and life gets good. 
So in the end, that's my, that's my 10 rules to financial freedom. As I sit here now recording this for you, probably eight or so of the 10 are very different. Again, inspired by what Meet Me, Kevin is doing. Um, you know, if you're still watching this, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button. I don't ask for that a lot. Uh, you know, the magic thumbs up, uh, as um, Graham Stephan says, for the YouTube algorithm. I don't do a great job of all that stuff. But in the end, do me a favor, share this video. I'd love a lot of people to see it. Love to compare mine with Meet Kevin's. I'd love to hear what you guys have to say. If you do watch both of these, leave a comment on both of ours talking about each other's. I'd love to hear what the differences are. All right, everybody, have a wonderful day.